This is the story of Hartsdales. The Sugiyama sisters, Yumi and Emi, were both born in Japan, but they wouldn't stay there for long. When Yumi was born in 1981, they would soon move to New York for their dad's interior design job. Their family would settle in a small city called Hartsdale, which would later be the name of their hip hop group. For 14 years, from the 80s to mid-1995, the girls would grow up listening to American music. Their favorite genres during that time would be hip hop, urban, and R&B. And they had the dream one day to introduce these genres to the Japanese audience. And they would get their chance when their family moved back to Japan in 1995. As the sisters settled back in the Japanese life, they would go to college. Yumi would go to Tama Art University, while Emi going to Keio University. Yet the world of music called to the sisters. When they entered a music TV audition program, Asayan, in 2001, they would win the competition, and the two sisters would formally enter the Japanese music industry. The sisters would choose the group name Hartsdales based off the New York suburb they grew up in. And of course, you gotta have a stage name if you're a singer, and the sisters would adopt the names Jules for Emmy and Rum for Yumi. At first, the sisters admitted that they had a hard time adjusting to writing Japanese lyrics, and that they were more used to hearing and writing English lyrics from their New York days. But they would soon adjust to the Japanese music industry and debut that same year in 2001 with So Tell Me. Their debut single would remain their biggest hit throughout their career. You know you've entered the early 2000s of music with the fashion style, music videos showing off cars, a lot of people dancing in the video, and the font styles on music videos. Hartsdales embodied that style of early 2000s music perfectly. Their first album in 2002, Radioactive, would hit number 6 on the Oricon, showing that their music resonated with Japanese audiences. They would release two new singles that same year with That's Why and Body Rock. Their early releases were very rooted in the urban and hip-hop genres, and you can see that they were influenced by their American upbringing. <laughs> You can really feel the influences of Salt and Peppa, Brian McKnight, and Run DMC in their music, as many of their songs would have that serious 90s R&B and hip hop throwback. Of course, some of their songs are also steeped in pop, such as in the video Candy Pop. As well as Hey DJ. During the early to mid-2000s, Hartsdales would be part of the Japanese-American movement that would go back to the motherland to start a new career in Japan. The sisters would befriend many other Japanese-American singers, as well as ones that grew up overseas or in an international setting in Japanese high schools. One group that grew up in an international setting that would play a huge part in their development would be M. Flow. Another artist they would meet in Japan but had American R&B influences was double. The sisters' mixing of fluent Japanese and English in their hip hop and RB music soon got an audience that would be craving for that style of American blended music. During this time, the duo M Flow would become close to the sisters. They would collaborate on the highly famed M Flow love series with Ai and Hino Uchi Emi in Hartsdale's Rum. The group would also collaborate with rappers Sold on Candy Pop as well as other big names in the 2000s J pop era, such as Kota Kumi, Lisa, Kreva, and Nakashima Mika. The duo looked primed to dominate the Japanese American influenced hip hop scene for years to come. Yet in 2006, it would all end. The group would quickly leave the Japanese music industry as fast as they entered it. In September 2006, they would have their finale, their final concert called The Legend Tour. After the tour ended, the two sisters would go their separate paths and form their own careers outside of music. Yumi would only be 25, while Emmy being 30, still at an age where it's pretty young to leave the music industry. While it's common for many singers in both J-pop as well as K-pop to pursue singing after their initial group disbands, Hartsdales wouldn't be pursuing that musical path. Emmy and Yumi just wanted to move on away from music. Yumi would move back to New York, start her own art studio, Studio Yumi, and give birth to a baby boy in 2010. Yumi would also attend Parsons' New School of Design. 
Emmy, on the other hand, would stay in Tokyo and open her own business in the nuts and food industry, and her company would be called Love Nuts Life. Other than that, there's very little public information on the sisters. And oh, trust me, I really tried to find information on Heartsdales. They really did disappear from the public spotlight. A look at their musical journey shows that they hustled during their five-year career. From 2001 to 2006, they released a slew of music, six albums and 14 singles. And most important, they were one of the pioneers to bring that urban and R&B sound to Japanese audiences. Although they've been spotted here and there for ads, the sisters pretty much left the spotlight altogether. And even though the sisters were around for only five short years in the J-pop industry, their urban and hip-hop songs would be a gateway to many J-pop fans during the 2000s. And the overseas fans of J-pop, Heartsdales was one of the staples during that time. Their early retirement from music would also show just how hard the music industry is in staying in for a long time and how singers oftentimes have other interests outside of making music. But even though the Sugiyama sisters had a short ride, it was great listening to them throughout their career. So thank you guys for watching, and I'd love to know your take in the comments below. Two other things to mention. If you want real talk with no fluff on how the K-pop industry actually works, then please grab my free ebook by signing up for the email list below. And if you like what we do here at Popstory, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. It's not necessary, of course, and we're honored if you just watch our videos. But for those that do support us on Patreon, we have some cool perks waiting. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everyone.